there is a feeling, is there, among many people that they do think this is a bit of a stitch up, that there have been allegations made against President Trump in the past on things like Russia, for example, that turned out to be blatantly untrue. And this is part of the same narrative. What we just listened to was just amazing. It was lies, deflect, lies, deflect. Who cares what about the truth? There are about 30 some percent of these extreme MAGA folks. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about the fact that the rule of law is for everyone. No one is above the law. These guys talk about law and order, but when it comes to them, throw it out the window. I mean, what's happened here is unprecedented, for sure. It's shocking. Is it surprising? Not in the least. And we all know in order to get warrants, you have to have a lot of evidence. Clearly, they thought national, national security items were at risk. Who, you know, your fellow before me said, what's he going to do with it? I don't know what he's going to do with it. Who knows what he's going to do with it? He just had the Saudis at a golf tournament in New Jersey. I don't know what he's going to do with it. Do you? Well, well, we we don't, but we also don't know if he's done anything wrong. I, I just come back to my original question, though, Susan, which is essentially that there's been lots of stuff said about President Trump in the past. He's been investigated quite a lot in the past. He, it's been found that lots of that is simply being made up, perpetuated, it must be said, by some people within the Democratic Party. It is not then a surprise that many people feel that there is a witch hunt how to stop President Trump. I, I can't say he's been investigated that much. He has undergone two impeachment trials. That's political. That's not law and order. These, you have to present evidence to do this. We have, what it's the Fourth Amendment, I guess, right to you know, a seizure. You have to have proper evidence. You have to go through the proper channels through a judge in order to get a search warrant. You have to have some sort of realization that there really has been a crime that's been committed. And the fellow who's head of the FBI, Christopher Wray, was a Trump appointee. So you can't turn around and say, ah, it's a Democratic plot. When you break the law, you have to be willing to pay for your crimes. And what we're investigating now are crimes. Maybe he didn't break, but we do know he took a lot of top secret documents out of the White House. You're not supposed to do that. There's a Presidential Records Act. You're not supposed to do that. And we just don't know. So this is why, I mean, many of us were uh, kind of getting a little anxious about why aren't we doing any more investigation? Well, we're thrilled it's here. It's unprecedented. And it is really a sorry state for where we are. But the good news is we're going to investigate and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Well, uh, we are. And, and, and as I was saying, Sebastian, we don't know how that investigation is going to go. And we can't really sit here and speculate what's going to happen either way, because, frankly, we don't have the evidence um, or we uh, don't know the full details at the moment. What we do know is the or, or, or we can speculate is the impact this might have politically. Isn't there a sense, though, that actually for lots of people who like uh, President Trump, millions of, of Americans, uh, they are deeply frustrated by this and, and that this... This investigation into a former president, a man who was elected to the White House, is only going to likely to divide America even more. It's only going to likely to entrench those uh, opinions on either side even more. But if he's broken the law, no one is above it. We know we have on tape the president, the former president of the United States calling the, the uh, election officials in Georgia, find me 11,600 votes. We don't do that in this country. So at some point here, we have to do all the investigating. And if he's guilty, he will pay. In saying that, you know, Sebastian Gorka is right in saying that Joe Biden's not having a good time of it at the moment. I mean, you know, he's passed an enormous climate change bill. We know that. And of course, uh, the uh, assassination or the killing of the Al Qaeda leader in Afghanistan. But his poll ratings are pretty low and it's looking pretty nasty for the Democrats going into the midterm elections in just a couple of months' time. Well, that's true. But you know what? Barack Obama was pretty low too in midterms. There are all not, not as low as this, though. Not as low as this. Not as low. That's true. But you know what? They also didn't have people on the far extreme right, these MAGA extremists, trying to take away everybody's rights but their own. And I feel bad that they just followed this, the emperor who has no clothes blatantly down the street while he's breaking law after law after law. We're on a roll. Joe Biden is on a roll right now. He's kind of got us out of a lot of COVID. He's got the shots in the arms. He's got the tests. He's got the drugs. He's passed the infrastructure bill. He's passed inflation, inflation busting bills. He's helping with um, control uh, costs of drugs. Let me tell you, we're on a roll and it takes a while to get stuff done. It doesn't happen yeah. overnight. 
Donald you know, Trump didn't do one flipping thing when he was in the White House except accuse other people of political misdeeds.